I'm Rod Morrison, a certified organic farmer here in Park County. Uh, somewhere halfway between Powell and Cood. And being certified organic, it just means that we're farming the land like we did in probably 1942, prior to World War II. Uh, meaning we, we use livestock to bring fertility back to the soils and then you know run a pretty strong ro crop rotation, pasture rotation, animal rotation around. Basically imitating mother nature is what it is. Well we grow grass for the animals right now because our soils here have been conventionally farmed for a number of years, number of decades in fact and so we're trying to build up some soil fertility with pastures and animals grazing on it and giving it a, a chance to recover. Well being organic it, and as far as those things all I mean that's what it's all about it's about how it all works together uh, we don't bring any inputs in here we don't bring anything from outside of this place uh, the feed that we raise gets fed to the livestock that live here and they lay down the manure that uh, that we want. We've got probably close to 370 acres of irrigated land and that means we have a right to put water on it. Uh, the other lands which total probably 150 are basically native lands that haven't been cultivated or plowed or they don't have water rights, so we don't grow a crop on them. I mean, as a human being and, and living in this habitat, I've, I've tried to improve it in the sense of planting more trees, trying to manage the soils in ways that allow for more, more, more and better habitat for wildlife. I don't burn my ditches, I don't burn my uh, aftermath. I don't. Uh, I don't spray anything. Uh, we mow where the noxious weeds are. Uh, but as far as you know, bird aviaries or bird places is probably the most important thing that Wyoming can can do to protect and help. Uh, the environment. Uh, that's one of the things that I see here. I wish I had more trees. I planted, oh, I've probably planted 500 trees. Uh, and my problem is the habitat likes the trees so much they eat them, and that's the deer. So, you know, trying to fight them to, to let the birds come in, you know, it, everything's got a reason for doing what it's doing, and you can't. <laughs> you can't argue with it, but I think the argument needs to be done. I'm not real impressed with the Russian olive tree. I've got a lot of those and birds love them, but they are so uh, prolific here, you know, and they they, they are, uh, uh, they just, they'll grow anywhere. Yeah. And, and they are, I know the state of Wyoming has put them on the noxious weed list, and uh, I, I, they just need to be managed, that's all. And I don't know that I would consider them noxious because I think birds have a great place to be in Russian olives. But uh, Russian olives need to be less. I allow hunting, you know, which I think is important because I, I do want, I, I do need to thin the deer and uh, it's a great way to do it. Uh, birds, we do bird hunting on the place. We don't, uh, we don't devastate them at all because there's plenty of cover and it's a challenge to get them up and it's a lot of fun and a lot of people have fun and kids come out with their parents and they feel like it's a good safe place to go and, and, and they're, they're very appreciative to the facts and that, that makes me feel good. Yeah, uh, the other part of it is a little bit of uh, tourism. Uh, we do uh, this campground. Uh, we, uh, we rent out a cabin up there at the house. 
Uh, we'll probably rent out the old homestead at, at some point next year uh, and possibly be some rooms in the big house. We built the house and the cabin. Uh, the building itself, the house is a uh, is as much uh, recycled material as we could come across. The beams were out of a grocery store that came down in Cody. So yeah, and then he, then two of the buildings are barracks is from the Japanese concentration camp relocation camp. Uh, then after that are all metal structures from the 70s, you know, everything was metal shops, so uh, both, you know, so it's, yeah, it's a, it's a time machine. My wife and I are members of the Crow tribe. We were adopted, or adopted members of the Crow tribe, the Absalica, and uh, the great people. Uh, we've, uh, so we've been doing this pipe ceremony every uh, every summer in July. And they come down, we get together here in this place, and we have a, a pipe ceremony and a tobacco ceremony. And we have a, 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 our crow elder by the name of Grant Bulltail, who, who, who his grandfather was born here. So, I mean, to me, that's just huge connectivity. It's fascinating to listen to his stories and to talk about this place and what it meant to, to his people and all the other Native Americans that were here in this place. If I had the resources and by that, the capital and the labor, I have the land. Uh, yeah, I would, do, I would do a number of things that would really improve the habitat, make it better for everything that lives here, including myself. So it's a balancing thing, and that's the thing I think humans get wrapped up in sometimes, you know, trying to figure out what that is and be part of it. And I think we can be good at it if we, if we study and learn what that, what that balance is. But understand, you do something here, it's impacting something over there. You know, it's never going to be just the way you want it. It's Mother Nature is going to say, what she wants. So as a human, that's, you know, I'm trying to manage it in a way that allows me to grow a healthy food for humans, an organic way, a sustainable way, and at the same time, interact with the wildlife that's here.